Hello, and welcome to another episode of America's Next Top Skincare DIY. In my hand, I have four household items. In one hand, there are items that, if you have them and you use them on your face, you should put the items down, raise your hand, and smack yourself silly. In the other hand are two items that you can find in your fridge, but you can use them on your face. Which one is which? Find out now on America's Next Top Skincare DIY. Hey guys, welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor on YouTube. And in today's video, first of all, we have a very special guest. I can't wait for you to meet her. Um, this is going to be actually my first time meeting her in person. Um, I've seen her on Instagram. She, we follow each other and we had like a quick chat before filming and we were just like kikiing and having a hoot. But today's topic at hand is skincare DIYs because some of y'all out there are putting things on your face <laughs> that's going to help your skin. So we're gonna be talking about that, which ones that you should probably back away from. And then, you know, because I hate to take things away and not give it back, we're also gonna be talking about some natural items that you can use in your skincare routine. <laughs> so keep watching. introduce herself because she has an amazing resume so kick it to you Carla. Hello everyone my name is Carla Nelson I'm a registered nurse and a licensed esthetician. I own Flutterlease Beauty and Aesthetics in Brooklyn New York. I co-own it with my sister Wendy Jules and we're super excited to be here today to talk all about skin. And then now we're gonna segue on to the first one. Yes. Lemon. Lemon, lemon, lemon. So let's talk about the lemon. A lot of people use it for like an astringent or for like a toner, but it can strip your skin. It could be a little bit too acidic for our skin. Right. And necessarily cause more, you know, hyper inflammatory responses. Right. So we want to remove ourselves from using lemon so much. You right. can mix it a little bit with apple cider vinegar. Not something so strong as a lemon. It could be a yeah. little acidic for your skin. Yeah. So what she means by hyper, what was the word? And like redness, inflamed. Inflamed. Yes. And, that, and with us, with deeper skin tones, that inflammation can turn into dark spots. Right? Hyperpigmentation. Yeah. And hyperpigmentation is very difficult in darker skin tones Fitzpatrick four through six that's what we are yes um it's hard it's hard in darker skin tones because our skin the melanin is there it's thick it's ready to be you know <laughs> used and beautiful so yeah. it's very hard to remove hyperpigmentation yeah so here's the thing with lemon so and Carla can probably explain this a little bit better than I can there is a pH scale. The skin sits on a certain level and then lemon sit on another level. Yes. So can you explain that for us? Yes. So the pH scale, as far as um, skin care goes, 7.5 percent is like where you're in the middle. And you want to make sure that you don't push the skin to being too acidic where the lemon is very acidic. And it could cause inflammation, redness to the skin. And if you do decide to use a lemon, which is not wrong, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you protect your skin with an SPF. Okay. Because it can irritate the skin when exposed to the sun. So people can use lemon. You can use lemon with restriction. You want to make sure that you oh. use SPF. So it's not too bad that you're using the lemon, uh -huh. but you want to make sure that you're covering your skin and protecting your skin from the uh, outside of your Okay, because I was about to say like, no, no, no lemon. No, we're not saying no, no lemon. lemon. We're not saying I no would have said no lemon. <laughs> <And> Carla said <laughs> we're not it's saying okay. no lemons, but we definitely want to protect our skin if we do decide to use a lemon. Right. I have a video on sunscreens. What was some non-ashy sunscreens yes. that I have been testing and using through the years? that will be linked in the description box. Now, we talked about acids. Yes. Let's talk about some basics. Sure. And bam! Baking soda! <laughs> baking baking soda. soda! I got baking soda! <laughs> so, talk to us about baking soda and why you might not want to use it on the skin. I would. I want to say that baking soda is not necessarily something that we use for the skin, mainly because two, I want to say, 
too alkaline. Right. Right. And that goes back to that scale where yeah. this was too acidic. This is too, <laughs> it's too basic. Yeah. But the proper term is alkaline. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely want, don't want to use that. You want to make sure your skin stays at a level at least a 5.5. Yeah. You know? And if you use those things for your skin, it can irritate your skin. It can cause your skin to be a little bit dry as well. So you want to know that the main thing to keep your skin in the middle, mainly not in too acidic, middle. not too alkaline, not too basic. Not too basic. <laughs> right? Don't be basic. Right in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to put a picture of coconut oil in okay. here because you guys know there's a budget. Skincare videos have a little <laughs> bit more budget as you can see. But we're still on a budget and the coconut oil, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I'll put the picture of, the, but you guys know what coconut oil is. People love coconut oil. You see all the memes, people want to just drench themselves their whole lives and everything in coconut oil. And all I have to say is that emoji. No coconut oil, no coconut oil. Here's the thing. Coconut oil is extremely comedogenic, meaning it congests the pores. Right. Whenever things, something can just the pores, it causes acne, it causes irritation, it causes inflammation, and then that goes into hyperpigmentation, picking your skin. Now we're into a whole different right. ball game. So staying away from coconut oil is a big thing. I tell people no coconut oil whatsoever. Okay. There's now, no substitutes. Now None. I know I can feel it. Because, you know, sometimes when I have one of these turbans, I feel like it gives me, like, psychic power. Yeah. I can feel someone crunching up their fingers to type a comment. <laughs> well, I use coconut oil and my it's skin is fine and I got you to print up that comment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody already is out there typing that. I know. So, what's our response? Well, I'm, my response is, if it works for you, clap it on up. But ideally, it doesn't work for most people. And a lot of people come in, especially if you already have oily skin type, you're adding more oils and more congestion. And how are you going to get rid of it if you're not exfoliating, if you're not getting rid of the oils, you're going to cause acne and, and comedones, close comedones. Yes. And me, I, my phrase for like the acne is like, I don't want to bump up. Exactly. So you don't want to bump up. <laughs> Using but coconut oil is great for the body, right? I mean, the body is a part of the skin, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, the skin is a whole uh, integumentary system. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, you can use it on for like drier skin types in the summer, like shea butter, and but for your face, I don't, I yeah. don't agree. And it's great for your hair too. Yes. For your hair. It depends. Depends. It depends Ooh. on your hair type as well. If you mm -hmm. have a drier hair type or if your, your hair likes to attach to moisture, mm -hmm. it depends on your hair type. Okay. Like my daughter, she can't put coconut oil on her um, on her hair. Her hair is drier and coconut oil makes her hair dry. As opposed to my oldest daughter, it works perfectly. Yeah. Fine. Definitely yeah. depends on your, your hair texture yeah. as well. And it's more, I would say coconut oil is probably more of like a seal in. Like yeah, it seals like in the, the moisture. Like yeah. you have to have moisture in your exactly. hair already and then you use the coconut oil to seal. So now we're going to switch gears and we're going to be talking about things that you can probably find in your kitchen yes. that aren't harmful. Because I feel like, uh, right, <laughs> if you live in New York City, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, because I, I kind of feel like, you know, when you, when you, you don't want to bad mouth too many yes. things, you want to add some good. Some good. And with that said, aloe vera! Woo! I love, love, love aloe vera. Should you or should I? Should you? <laughs> I feel like I feel like I feel like when you have the aloe vera stick in your hand, you can talk. That means you have the food. Yes, okay. So. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Aloe vera. I bow down to this aloe vera mainly because aloe vera has so many antioxidants in it. Aloe vera has vitamin A, vitamin C. It uh, has great enzymes. So aloe vera would be necessary for anything mm -hmm. for exfoliating the skin, for neutralizing the skin, for moisturizing the skin. Aloe vera is like that holy grail. Not only can you put it on, whatever goes on should also go in. Mm. And I always say skin starts in the gut. Mm. So it's the best, absolutely Ooh, best. So thing. you should ingest it. Oh, ingest it. Absolutely. Oh, do you put it in water? You can put it in water okay. or you can take in aloe vera juice. Yeah, right. Aloe vera, aloe vera juice. juice. Yes, aloe vera yeah. juice is great for your digestive enzymes. It helps cleanse your skin and mm. your gut. So if I wanted to, I'm going to take back. Yes. Now, now, I, have a, I have a question. So how would one like cut this up? What should they do to, now we're not going to cut it up because, um, 
<clears throat> like I said, we want a budget exactly. here. And I ain't trying to have an extra cleaning bill. Exactly. But theoretically, how would one use the aloe vera in their skin? Routine? On their skin. Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut this up. You can dice it up. You remove the first layer. You want to get rid of the end of the aloe vera mm -hmm. because this is not really beneficial for you, but you mm -hmm. can use everything else up top. Cut it up. You can remove the green skins. Take out the, the insides. It's a clear, mushy inside of mm -hmm. the aloe vera and you apply it directly to your skin. Mm -hmm. If you want to make an aloe vera juice or oil for your skin, you can um, put this on the fire with a little bit of avocado oil mm -hmm. and then you can apply it to your skin. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Avocado okay. oil is great for the skin. All right. So we're going to... Wait, I almost spoke out of turn. Yeah. So next we're going to talk about <laughs> another good for you item that you can find in your kitchen that you could use for your skin. Turmeric. Turmeric. Brightening. Brightening. Brightening, brightening, brightening. Now the funny thing is, I just went grocery shopping just mm. to buy props for this video. So I'm not even sure if this is what, <laughs> what you should actually be using at home. No, is it's this? fine. It's okay. fine. And you can make a paste out of the turmeric. Mm -hmm. A turmeric, I should say. Um, it helps with brightening the skin. Hyperpigmentation, acne scarring. Turmeric is more of a holistic route um, that you can use for brightening up the skin. Okay. I would say you can mix it up, make a paste out of it, and leave it on for a few minutes as a mask, like a turmeric mask. Okay, so basically you would take um, whatever parts turmeric water, and mix it with water. water uh, maybe a half a teaspoon of water. Can it be regular New York City tap? Or should it regular be regular tap? Water? Regular tap. Okay. We can use regular <laughs> tap. Make it out of a paste. Put it on as a mask, allow it to sit for five to ten minutes, and then remove it. Of course, this may take a bit longer to get the effects that you would like, but it is effective in brightening up your skin. Okay. Yeah, and that's a great point that she made because, um, you know, in other videos when I was talking about, like, why you still have dark spots, um, there are certain ingredients that, you know, they work a little faster, yeah. and then some of the more nat natural ones... You know, they take their, they take exactly. their time. Exactly, they take their time. Yeah. It definitely takes their time. What I would say also, um, turmeric is like a replacement of kojic acid. Kojic acid helps brightening up the skin, and that's the same thing that um, turmeric does. Turmeric, I should say. So I say, I, I don't know, I interchange it. That's fine. Tomato, I'm tomato. Too. Yeah, turmeric, turmeric, the orange stuff. The orange stuff. <laughs> Bam. All right, and everyone's favorite. Cucumber! <laughs> And cucumber helps with circulation. Yeah. It does help with circulation. So whenever you ingest it or you apply it onto the skin, it helps with puffiness under mm -hmm. the eyes or anywhere in the skin, anti-inflammatory. That's one of the main things a lot of us have, mainly because we're exposed to many free radicals, meaning uh, environmental issues that can cause pollution, pollutants on our skin that causes inflammation or you know acne that causes inflammation. Cucumber helps move the blood. It helps with puffiness. It helps circulate blood wherever it needs to go. So that's one of the main things I would definitely keep in and use is a cucumber, especially under the eyes, girl. Yes. Because I can't. I got Chanel bags. I got E. Saint Laurent bags. I got all the bags. <laughs> all right. I have a little confession to make. Yes. I don't like DIY skincare, to be honest. I, it's just a lifestyle thing for me. I, I just don't have the patience. I'm like, I like, listen. Yeah. I have my groceries delivered now. Like, yeah. I, I just don't have the time to lie. I, like, no. I agree. I can't be cutting up lemons and making sure that the pH is right. And, and it takes a lot and, and, and mixing to get up the effects. Yeah. Like, if I'm gonna be mixing stuff up, it better be for my dinner. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's I just agree. How I feel. And I tell people check out your local esthetician. It's much easier to just come in, lay back, chillax, and relax, and, and um, be edified about the skin yeah. through knowledge, not yeah. necessarily through eating. Guys, <laughs> listen. It was a pleasure. <laughs> when have you ever met an esthetician with so much personality? Please tell the people where they can find out more about your business. Well, my sister and I, own Flirtily's Beauty and Aesthetics in Brooklyn, New York, 1468 Flatbush Avenue. Okay, Flatbush. Flatbush. Um, we're both registered nurses and I'm also a licensed esthetician. And you can find us there on Instagram at Flirtily's Beauty. Yes, and I will link that in the description box along with any other pertinent information, like if there's any other blog posts or videos that you should check out. 
Listen, I'm going, I don't, listen, we gonna do another video. I'm going to do another video. We are going to do Why another not? video. Why so not? make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Subscribe. Is it linked? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna be somewhere <laughs> in here. But y'all know where to subscribe exactly. button. Y'all been on YouTube. Make sure you turn on the notifications so that you know when a video comes up. Follow me on social. I'll have the links in the description box. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Next Bye, video. guys. Bye. <laughs>